是帮咩？ We'll call the first regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Bauman here. Berg here. Doyle here. Graf here. Manny here. Montemayor here. Moody here. Perez here. Rinfleisch here. Schultz. Schultz. <laughs> Who did I miss? <laughs> I don't have Bonnet in here. <laughs> Bonnet. <laughs> Stefan. I always vote after Schultz. Are you blushing? Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. Wangeman. Here. Warner. Here. Weninger. Yeah. 16 present. Quorum's present. And moving on. <laughs> uh, who's leading us in a pledge this evening? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All of us, Devin. This evening, uh, Pastor Richard C. Manny from First Presbyterian Church will do our invocation. Pastor Manny, please. And the mayor asked me to share a few comments that would be appropriate for the evening before I voice the prayer. So, because I have a little political theory background in my undergraduate years, long time ago, I'll share a few comments uh, along the lines of our political democracy. This last week, we have gleaned pictures from the news media of looters in Baghdad. And as we see those pictures, we are reminded of the importance of order. And also of the importance of our public, political, and social lives. I would suggest that the basis of a civil society rests on the appropriate establishment of authority and the careful use of power. I suggest also that modern political theory reflects the attempt to keep those two things in balance. When authority and power are in balance, individual rights and liberties are valued, and transitions of those in leadership are peaceful, as is evidenced this evening. I don't think anyone killed to take a seat here tonight, although it may, the seat may destroy your family life. <laughs> In my mind, in our democratic society, we take a lot for granted. We assume that individual rights will be honored, and we assume that transitions will be peaceful. But I think if we take the historical perspective, we realize that democracy is not a fail-safe form of government. But in contrast, democracies only flourish when we win them again and again by pursuing the principles by which we are founded and on which we live. Alexis de Tocqueville in the 18th century, in observing the American democratic experiment said, the strength of democracy in my mind lives and is based upon the involvement of people in their local political processes and in the values that participation in church life fosters. There is a danger in interest groups in democracies when people lose the good of the whole in pursuit of their own narrow group's interest. We see that in our society by the pile of legislation that blocks our court systems. 
And in any society of a democratic basis, when that kind of self-interest predominates, movements towards balkanization occur. And democracies end up very different than they were to begin with. For us, in local government, there is promise and possibility in living out the democratic experiment. Because we come to involve many in our work. We come with diverse talents offered. We ask many different questions that come from different perspectives. And because of that, the whole is better than the sum of its parts. So I believe there is pleasure and satisfaction here for us in the work of this next year. In open and honest pursuit of the common good, and with uh, the work done in civility, based upon some sense of our common humility, i.e., we don't have all the answers. But together, in pursuit of the common good, listening and verbalizing and seeking the best between us, we will do well. And in many cases, we have done well. So tonight, let's celebrate the rule of law and the democratic process and commit to be together civil and humble and directed towards the common good, because in that we will have pleasure and we will be productive in our work together. Let us pray. <clears throat> Dear God, as the whole universe is upheld by the word of your power and by the impulse of your will, so too we are kept in the blessings of freedom and democracy as we recognize and honor your image in which we have been made. In this year of work ahead, may we who labor for the good of our city share the pleasure of mutual respect, honor the citizens whom we represent, and be diligent in our tasks, alive to the satisfaction of servanthood lived and to the joys of life shared. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. <coughs> OK, now we will have the swearing in of the city attorney. I'm Pat Mosey. I'm Steve McLean. I swear that I support the Constitution of the United States. I swear that I will support. of the state of Wisconsin and the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin and will faithfully and impartially and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties discharge the duties of the office of city clerk of the office of city clerk to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God okay now the alderman Yeah, Pat, you want to use the microphone, please? Okay, I'll try. I'll use this one. This kind of all my don't use it more. Not down here. Okay. You heard what we did. Discuss 
song jumbled when you all say your own names, but just say your own names. Everybody say Fred Willie. Yeah, everybody say Fred Willie. Is this how the year is going to go? No. Oh, I'll just keep this. No. Thank you. Yeah, I'm nervous. I've never done this before. <laughs> I had losing. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially. And will faithfully and impartially. Dis discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the office of older person. Of the office of older person. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. The other stuff first? Yeah. All right. Okay. Adopting the rules of the Common Council, Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that we adopt the rules of the Common Council for the year 2003 2004. Second. Moved and seconded that we adopt the previous rules of the Common mm -hmm. Council for 2003 2004. Under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Election of President and Vice President of the Common Council. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloting to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. So we move to the second that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by closed ballot, and if one or more candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes will be dropped from the list. Okay, nominations. Alderman Warner. Well, oh, thank you, Your Honor. We're taking president first, president and then we'll go first. vice president. Thank you, Your Honor. It is my pleasure to nominate for president of the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan, someone that truly will meet the challenge of the year ahead. This person knows the council inside out. This person understands the issues and is a leader with more experience than most of us, if not all of us here tonight. We'll face many difficulties and challenges this coming year, and we will need a cool hand at the helm. An experienced servant of the people, I nominate Alderman James Groff for President of the Common Council. Okay, we have a nomination Alderman Groff for President. Alderman Vanderweele, anyone else? Van I'd like to nominate, thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to nominate Juan Perez for President because he's an obvious leader of the Council and Vice President of last year's Council, and he is the best person for this role. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other nominations? Second. Oh, we need a second. Second. Okay, it's moved. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Are there any other nominations from the floor? Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. Move and nomination seats. Second. It's moved and seconded. And nominations be closed. Okay, we vote. A what you'll do, you have a ballot. It says signature and my vote is for. You must sign your name to it and then write down underneath that who you're voting for.
Okay, the results are Graf 9, Perez 7. Congratulations, Alderman Graf. Now we'll have the uh, election for vice president. Nominee for vice president. We don't have a vice president? <laughs> Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I had the wrong note here. I thought I was supposed to nominate him for Committee of the Whole. But <clears throat> for Vice President of the Council, I would like to place on in nomination the name of Mike Warner. He has been a um, true leader on this council starting out um, six years ago, I believe. Four years ago? Is that right? Oh, oh. Four years ago. Seems like forever. Um, and. Um, <clears throat> I know he'll, he will do a good job. He has um, uh, headed the uh, Public Protection and Safety Committee as well as the licensing portion of it and has done an extremely good job. He's worked with many, uh, many department heads and I'm sure he will do a good job as um, Vice President of Council. And one of the things that I look forward to in, what, in my last tenure on this council was uh, have um, Mike follow me uh, as, as president and uh, this could be the result of that reality coming true. Okay, I have one nominee in a second. Are there any other nominees for vice president? Any other nominees for vice president? Alderman Groff? I would move that nominations be closed and a unanimous ballot be cast for uh, Alderman Mike Warner. Second. Moved and second that nominees, nominations be closed and a unanimous ballot be cast for Alderman Warner under discussion. Are you not all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Alderman Warner. <laughs> Election of Representative City Plan Commission. Alderman Wangaman. Actually, it's. Uh, thank oh, you, Ron. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We have to have a motion. This is for Plan Commission, Plan Commission yes. Board of Contractors Examiners, and two representatives on the Capital Improvements Commission. We have the same rules. We have to have, adopt some rules first. Uh, Alderman Perez, you have the rules. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that nominations be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list, and ballots to continue until one candidate receives a majority. Second. It's moved and second that nomination be received from the floor, voting to be done by open ballot, and if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list. Okay, nominations. Alderman Warner. No. I'd like to place into uh, nomination for the City Plan Commission, Alderman Warner. Uh, Alderman Groff has said all the good things I was going to say about Mike, but he's been here for four years, and he's done an admirable job with the uh, public safety and protection I think he would be a good candidate for second. this job. It's been moved and seconded for Alderman Warner. Are there any other nominations out there? Any other nominations? Your Honor, I would uh, make a motion we cast a unanimous ballot for office, uh, for, I was going to say officer, you can tell, right? <laughs> Alderman Warner. Second. It's moved and seconded that a unanimous ballot be cast for Alderman Warner. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Alderman Warner, again. <laughs> representative Board of Contractors and Examiner and two representatives. Oh, you want to do the examiner Separate. first? Okay, we'll do the examiner first. <laughs> Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like to nominate Alderman Dennis Bauman to the Board of Electrical Examiners. Alderman Bauman has Past experience? Oh, contractors, examiners, excuse me. You got it right. We'll be looking after the electrical part of that also. But Alderman Bauman has past experience and a, and a good understanding of the board's function and its responsibilities. And I know Alderman Bauman will serve the council as well as our, as, well as our representative on the uh, board of contractor examiners. Thank you. Thank you. Any second? Second. It's moved and seconded for Alderman Bauman for contractors examiners. Is there any other nominations? 
Are there any other nominations? If not, I would entertain a motion. Floor be closed. Thank you, Your Honor. Move the nominations be closed and a unanimous ballot be cast for Alderman Bauman. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Congratulations, Alderman Bauman. Again. Okay, now we have two representatives of Capital Improvements Commission. Alderman Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would like to nominate my colleague, Bill Wangaman. Bill has been on the council for four years, but I think he's probably been around <coughs> City Hall a lot longer than any of us. He served as 28 years as a police officer, and he's been the city historian since 1986. So I think he's very, very knowledgeable about the city of Sheboygan. He'd be a top-notch candidate for capital improvements. It's so moved and seconded, Alderman Wangaman. Do we have any other nominees? Any other nomination? We need one more for capital improvements. Alderman Warner. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I would nominate Alderman Anthony Bonet. I think Anthony will make a valuable addition to this year's commission. Anthony has proven ability and common sense needed to serve on the Capital Improvements Commission. Having worked with Anthony on public protection and safety as well as building use and salary agreements, I can assure you he is well qualified and will serve the council, council well as a commissioner. Thank you. Okay, we have a second for Alderman Bonet. Is there any? Alderman Wangaman? No? Yes? No? No. Okay. Okay, I would entertain a motion to close the nominations. Right. And a unanimous ballot be cast? For the two, correct. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, gentlemen. Okay, now we recess to elect Chairman of Committee of the Whole. So Pat and I, we have to... If you need to go, um, need, I don't know how you're going to do it, open, close, fucking ballots with you. We'll call the meeting of the Committee of the Whole to order, and our business is to elect a chairman of the Committee of the Whole. <clears throat> uh, I will call roll first. Uh, Berg? Here. Bonet? Here. Doyle? Here. Brown. Manny? Here. Montemar? Here. Moody? Here. Perez? Here. Renflish? Here. Stephan? Here. Van Akron? Here. Vanderweely? Here. Wangaman? Here. Warner? Here. Weninger? Here. Bauman? Here. 16 present. A quorum is present. I will now entertain motion or um, motions to elect um, uh, Committee of the Whole Chairman. Oh, we have to do that too. Just a minute. First of all, we have to adopt the rules. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Alderman Drop. I will move the nomination to be received from the floor. Vote is to be done by a closed ballot, and if, two, if more than two candidates are nominated, the candidate with the lowest number of votes be dropped from the list and balloted to continue until one candidate receives the majority. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded, as Alderman Perez read. Um, is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of adopting the rules say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Now, nominations for um, Committee of the Whole Chair. Alderman Berg. I nominate Michael Warner for Chairman of the Committee of the Whole. It's been moved and seconded to nominate Michael Warner. Uh, are there any other nominations? 
Alderman Renfish. I nominate Alderman Juan Perez. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded to all, um, nominate uh, Alderman Perez. Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Are there any other nominations? Then a motion to close the nominations? So moved. Been moved and seconded that nominations be closed. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And until we get one, or else the mayor can break it. After two votes, I think.
Kai. It's kind of good for you to leave, but the people can all stay. Well, it's a tool, otherwise you can't come to tie. <laughs> oh, weird. Never mind. Well, I was going to say, if you can't find one, you can't find two because there's another one of us alone. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order again. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I wish to report that after uh, two votes and a recount, uh, Alderman Warner is the Chairman of Committee of the Whole. Congratulations again, Alderman Warner. Thank you. Alderman Groff, do you have my agenda? Did you take it with you? Maybe. It says mayor. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> that would be it. <laughs> Did you want to keep it for a while yet? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. <laughs> uh. Get up here, you can get up in a world too. Now you can stand on a step with me. Good evening, council members, Pat, Steve, and guests. I am both proud and honored to stand before you this evening as mayor of a city which continues to receive national recognition. Listen for a moment what others are saying about Sheboygan. Number one hometown, USA. Money Magazine's top U.S. location for retirement living. Reader's Digest, number one place in the nation to raise a family. One of our fourth nation's safest cities. And the third destination for golf in the United States. All these accolades point to a community which tirelessly seeks to enhance its reputation as a city which combines quality of life, affordability, and economic expansion. But with all these successes comes challenges, and it is those challenges which I would like to begin my talk this evening. 
The greatest challenge we face is that of change. Change creates uncertainty, and this uncertainty promotes fear. Fear, however, will not defeat us. Uncertainty will not consume us, and challenges before us will be overcome. Opportunity overcomes uncertainty, and hope always def defeats fear, and holds the promise of a better tomorrow. Guided by sound principles, our leadership actions take on a sense of urgency and bring fulfillment to our purpose. Our challenges will begin in the upcoming council year with the anticipated $840,000 reduction in state shared revenue. This figure represents the best case scenario of how much Sheboygan will be asked to contribute towards the state fiscal crisis. There are legislators in Madison who would like to make deeper cuts in shared revenues, which would increase the amount of our shared sacrifice. I encourage all of you, as leaders of our community, to fight these attempts. When the proposed reduction in shared revenue is combined with continuing double-digit increases in employee health care, anticipated wage demands, and necessary capital expenditures, this equates to a multi-million dollar challenge for this body. Our challenge is not only to look for immediate solutions, but also lay the framework for long-term solutions that will solidify our financial future. To accomplish this, each of you, all city departments, all city employees, and all our residents must become part of the solution. Several weeks ago, I outlined my proposal for successfully meeting these challenges and I encourage the entire leadership team of our community to implement these or like-minded proposals in order to assist the state with its fiscal crisis and to maintain our community's own fiscal integrity. I have asked each city department head to determine the impact of a 7% across the board reduction in their budget. Many department heads have indicated they can only accomplish this through a decrease in personnel. Clearly, this, sends, this signals the dis, distinct possibility of layoffs and decreases in city services. To minimize this impact, it is imperative that the city hiring freeze continue. I propose that all currently unfilled positions remain vacant, that the Salary and Grievance Committee work with our Finance and Human Resource Department to promote retirement of long-term employees, and that positions in which employees retire this year be thoroughly reviewed for the possibility of consolidation with existing positions. Through negotiations, I'm asking all city employees to increase their currently current contributions to our health care costs. Several city employee groups have already agreed to do so, and I urge the remaining union leadership to step forward and follow suit. I applaud the management and staff of Mead Public Library for considering a reduced work week to help meet the financial challenges which the city faces. A redu reduced work week not only decreases payroll, it also minimizes the need for employee layoffs. I continue to ask all our city employees to offer suggestions to their department heads on ways to reduce cost, identify reoccurring problems, improve quality, and generate additional revenue within their departments. Those employees who feel uncomfortable going to their immediate supervisors may submit their recommendations directly to me. I will personally work with the department head in reviewing each suggestion. This process worked well in the Sheboygan area school system, and I remain hopeful that the city employees will be equally as helpful as the employees of the school system in identifying cost savings opportunities. Part of our long-term financial plan should include the application of user fees to pay for city services and functions. I do believe, however, Strict scrutiny of such fees must be put into place so the money collected is being applied to the services described and that financial accountability to our residents can be maintained. In order to continue meeting our commitment to maintaining our streets, I ask the, the Finance Committee to freeze the wheel tax at its current rate of $6 per vehicle per year to apply these revenues, which I estimate at $200,000, to our general fund. There are other initiatives which I ask you as a council to begin exploring immediately. 
consolidation with county in services which all county residents use must be implemented. The three areas where I feel consolidation is most equitable and beneficial are a countywide library system, countywide recycling, and countywide refuge disposal. I challenge our finance and public works committees to immediately address these topics and begin working with our county supervisors in reducing the cost of both city and county government. The process for consolidation must begin now since agreements we reach today will serve as long-term solutions to reducing the cost of government. There is one key point to our budgetary efforts that I must make. We must be cautious not to overreact and make cuts that are unwise. Short-sighted or unnecessary. When Governor Doyle released his budget proposal and it became apparent we would receive less in shared revenue, he indicated this is a short-term solution to this budget period's crisis. If we all accept some level of sacrifice, the next budget process will be filled with less difficulty, pain, and uncertainty. In addition, locally we face questions as to how we can pro propose new development while facing budgetary shortfalls. It is important to note that many of the dollars used for development cannot be used to provide services. Likewise, many dollars earmarked for services would be unwise to be allocated towards development. Thus, regardless of any development projects that do or do not occur, the reduction in shared revenue will require many of the choices to be made I have just outlined this evening. While I have addressed our budgetary challenges, I must also address two major projects facing our community. Construction of a new police facility and the Great Lakes development. We are currently working with the county officials to purchase county-owned property for the construction of our police facility. The latest proposal is one I support since it will not only save taxpayers dollars but also allow for future consolidation of law enforcement services. We have developed a financing plan which is realistic, responsible, and a small price to pay for the safety of our community. I urge our Public Protection and Safety Committee to be a major player in this project in negotiations with the county. I also would like to briefly address the Blue Harbor Resort project. Without question, this project is the single most important opportunity in Sheboygan's history. It removes a vacant and blighted area and creates a world-class tourism anchor for substantial future business development in the area. There are risks but we have included substantial safeguards. Clearly, the benefits far outweigh those risks. Last evening, the previous council displayed the courage and wisdom to seize the opportunity put before them and gave their endorsement to this project, which will shape Sheboygan's future for years to come. Some individuals continue to question the timeliness of this project given our upcoming budgetary crisis. In reality, is that at the times of our greatest budgetary challenges that a community must step forward to seek development which can generate additional revenues. It is during the times of our greatest challenges and difficult decisions that leaders must emerge. Leaders who are not afraid to take a risk, to accept responsibility, and to create a future full of hope. I wholeheartedly endorse this project and anxiously await its completion. In keeping with past traditions now, I would like to call upon our new Common Council President, Alderman Groff, and Committee of the Whole Chairman, Alderman Warner, to share with us their views for our upcoming council year. Alderman Groff. I will move them so you don't take them. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to stand in there just in front. So. Mayor Schramm, City Clerk Pat, City Attorney Steve, members of the Common Council, um, 
guests in the audience and our television audience, as well as all the electors in the city of Sheboygan, who will more than likely be reading this or some of these excerpts in, uh, in the paper tomorrow. I want to start off by saying um, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you to the, the voters of the 4th District in the city of Sheboygan who re-elected me to uh, the Common Council. Uh, um, I'm really thankful for that. And then secondly, thanks to the um, members of this Common Council who elected me to um, lead them uh, during the 2003-2004 Council year as, um, as president. And then um, I just want to say I appreciate the support and faith that all of you showed in me uh, to help um, and the help that I know you are going to give me to lead this council and the city of Sheboygan forward. Um, looking ahead at next Monday's agenda, um, I can see Pat Losey uh, clearly um, did it again. She hit the nail on the head, um, and she's given us words by which um, I hope every alderman will live by during the next, next year. The words that are on this agenda are begin today to listen to yourself until everything you hear works for the positive. Um, that's one of the um, big things we need to do in 2003 and 2004, be positive. Uh, as the mayor stated, a consolidation of services, the building of the uh, Blue Harbor Resort, uh, working for a, a new police station and several other major projects that he mentioned. Um, we have to keep uh, our thinking positive. Uh, there's several things that uh, I know are are lying out there waiting to be done. Uh, I know the stormwater management program, which is something that um, I hope was done um, several years ago. I'm hoping that that will be looked at again as something that we may need to do in order to uh, <clears throat> uh, decrease some of the costs that uh, we're looking at right now. Uh, my fellow aldermen, um, I'm asking you that um, and uh, requesting that you be as positive um, in order to make the best decisions for the city of Sheboygan. We also need to keep our constituents positive by keeping them informed, and we need to keep our employees here in the city um, positive by showing that we appreciate them in anything we can, can do. When we keep everybody positive, um, we will be productive in all that we do, and we will keep Sheboygan moving forward, which is what I'm planning on doing in 2003 and 2004, and I hope you all join with me. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman McGrath. Alderman Warner, please. Citizens of the city of Sheboygan, Mayor Schramm, my fellow council members, the excellent staff and employees of the city of Sheboygan, it truly is an honor to stand before you today. Never in my wildest dreams have I envisioned myself in such a position of honor, and I thank you for that. The coming year will have many challenges. We will confront them all. We will tackle our budgetary concerns, the growth of our city, and plan for the future of the greatest city there is, Sheboygan. The South Pier District will come alive, signaling a new era in Sheboygan's history and future. We will address the flooding concerns that remain from the aftermath of the flood of 98. And after decades of debate and inaction, we will take a giant leap forward in the construction of a much needed long overdue new home for the Sheboygan Police Department. Mayor Schramm, I personally thank you for your leadership, your understanding, and vision to move the new police facility forward. It would not be possible without your support. We have heard a lot lately about the need to communicate and the need to get information into the hands of the members of this Common Council. Much of the responsibility to be informed falls on each of us individually. We must attend meetings and communicate with the staff to keep abreast of, of what is happening in our city. And we must seek answers to 
to our questions on a regular basis. I'm a firm believer that an informed counsel is an effective counsel and will take the necessary steps to see that we are informed, informed on the issues and informed on the inner workings of the city, department by department. We will have regular meetings of the Committee of the Whole. I know more meetings, no one, no one likes that, but we're going to try to make it a little easier. Some, some will be for educational and informational purposes, and others will be for debate and discussion. We will schedule these meetings monthly, prior to at least one of the monthly Common Council meetings. And when we have a major issue, we will schedule a separate meeting to deal with it. The meetings will be televised via Sheboygan's TV8, so our citizens can learn and understand with us, not as an afterthought. The content of the monthly meetings has not been set, but will include issues such as the drug problem in our city, as well as police, fire and public works issues and information. I will ask each department to prepare and provide information and interesting presentations after which time will be allowed for questions and answers. How many of you know what the COPS team is all about? How many really understand the concept of community policing? How many know, how many of us know what modern fire safety is all about? What do we know about the benefits and service provided by our first responders? What does it really take to plow our streets, salt our roads, and remove our garbage? What does it take to prepare, clean, and maintain our beautiful parks? Those are the types of things we're going to be looking at, amongst others. In addition, the city clerk's office, building inspection, planning and development, transit, the water department, and others will be given the opportunity to address this council as well. All of these are important parts of the quality of life and future of our city. With all that is before us in the coming year, Many would fear the future. We will not and cannot fear the future. To do so would be a disservice to our city. Instead, we will reach out to tomorrow and use the past as it was intended, as a lesson in history, not a wall to stop our progress. Again, Mayor Schramm, I thank you for your leadership and vision for the future of our great city, Sheboygan. To my Common Council colleagues, I thank you for your confidence and desire to move Sheboygan forward. We will do so together. To the city staff, department heads, and employees, thank you for your expert advice and the dedicated service to your city. And to the citizens of the city of Sheboygan, I thank you, and God bless Sheboygan. He didn't take the speech, he took the microphone along. Now, I would like to congratulate our alderpersons. Alderperson Manny, congratulations. Is there anyone here you'd like to introduce with you this evening? Uh, would you stand, please, when I do? Okay, thank you. Alderman Van Akron. Anyone here you'd like to? Yes, Your Honor. I had my wife for 50 years. Okay. <laughs> Stay standing, guys. Stay standing until we get through this. Alderman Bauman. Anyone here this yes, evening? Sir. Alderman Warner. And Alderman Wangaman. Congratulations on your re-election. And I would also like to welcome Alderman 
Bonet. Alderman Bonet, please stand. And someone, is Jill with you this evening? Yes, I'd like to recognize my wonderful and loving wife, Jill Bonet. Thank you. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. My wife for 29 years, who has somehow managed to have a, a thorn or a thistle put in my belly. For <laughs> <laughs> some reason or other, I don't know why. Alderman Reinfrush. Yes, Your Honor. My lovely son, Dan, from both my parents, my aunt, and both my uncle. And Alderman Montebier. Yes, thank you. My husband was here earlier. My husband of 40 years failed, so I'm getting close to you. <laughs> the guy in the red shirt, he had to go to work. But my son is here, Jay, and my daughter-in-law, Amy, who couldn't choose a better one out of the catalog to try. <laughs> and my good friend, Susan Armenia. Thank you. Okay. Before I end my remarks tonight, I would like to extend a sincere debt of gratitude and admiration to the men and women of our armed forces. For the past four weeks, they have sacrificed greatly in order to protect our nation, to defend our freedom, and to affirm the values we, as a country, state, in city uphold. May we remember them this evening, remember their families, and may they return home safely. Now, as elected officials of our community, the challenges we face in the upcoming year may well be some of the greatest faced in our community's history. These challenges are brought about by real issues issues often beyond our immediate control. It would be understandable to look to others for answers, to wait, to be tentative, and to look to the future with uncertainty. Our future, however, is what we choose to make it. We will not sit idly by. We will not wait for others to tell what Sheboygan's future will be. Past leaders of our community had the courage to take risks risks that, they ha that have resulted in our riverfront boardwalk, our marina, our rejuvenated A Street, and our first class library. Last evening, many of you took hold, uh, hold of the opportunity to lead, accepted the risks, and had the vision to see a better future for our community. I encourage all of you in the upcoming year to bring forth ideas, propose solutions, challenge each other, and be a force for positive change in our community. Leadership is the action necessary to create a community full of opportunity, possibility, and dreams. Courage, wisdom, and hope are the tools leaders need to put into action. Take action. Dream big. Take hold of your opportunity, our opportunity, Sheboygan's opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is now. Thank you, and God bless you. Okay, Mayor's appointments. Steve? Go ahead. Today's date to the honorable members of the Common Council. I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Finance Committee, Alderperson James Graff, Chairman, Alderman Winninger, Vice Chairman, Alderman Stephan, Doyle, and Bonet. Public Protection and Safety Committee, Alderman Michael Warner, Chairman, Alderman Doyle, Vice Chairman, Alderman Moody, Wangeman, and Vanderweel. Public Works Committee, Alderman Dennis Bauman, Chairman, Alderman Berg, Vice Chairman, Alderman Moody, Montemeyer, and Rinfleisch. Salary and Grievances Committee, Alderman Don Van Akron, Chairman, Alderman Wangaman, Vice Chairman, Alderman Wenninger, Manny, and Perez. Signed by the Mayor. Okay, these will lay over. Uh, all the Aldermen have on your desks the appointments by the mayor to the various
boards, committees, commissions, uh, and based on past president, uh, precedent, uh, I won't read, read them all unless okay. you so desire. Those lay over until next week. Okay, with that, public forum, Pat? Okay, to the agenda. 1-1 one, one through 1-2 one, will lie over. 1-3 lies over until 5-19. 1-4 1-14 to be referred. 1-15, by Alderman Perez, requesting the mayor to reactivate various special committees for the 2003-2004 council year. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I, uh Make a motion that the resolution be put upon this passage. Moved and second the resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 116, by Alderman Warner, establishing the referral of the state budget impact to the Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee. Alderman Warner. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion the resolution be put upon its passage. Moved and second the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 117 through 119 to be referred. 120 will go to Special Committee on Risk Management. 121 will go to Special Committee on Risk Management. Steve? I've got one that's not numbered. It's an RO, but 122 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Char Sharpakniak, Executive Director of the Literacy Council, requesting the City's permission to have a donation of access to the Internet installed at 926 Broughton Drive. Public Works. 123 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a claim from Sharp Creations to recover personal property taxes paid in error for property located in the town of Sheboygan. We'll go to Finance. 124 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a notice of circumstances of claim and claim in the matter of English Manor Bed and Breakfast, Susan Hundley, and Lakeview Manor Bed and Breakfast, Renee Susha, relative to the use of city room taxes. That will go to a Special Committee on Risk Management. Move to second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?